Welcome to the EMBN Show. Adam is back and we've got the finance police hot on the heels of the fashion police in today's show. So knowing what's coming on today's show in terms of high-end pricing, let's start on the other end of the spectrum. Let's go to a brand that we probably all know and love, Decathlon and what they've got coming. Yeah, I mean, this isn't new news, Adam. We've, uh, we've seen the Decathlon bikes many times on the channel. Uh, but these two new bikes, hardtail and full suspension, are worth reminding you guys about. You know, because it's not just about the five-figure e-bikes. I mean, the these I'd bikes... I'd like to steer away from the five-figure e-bikes, to be fair. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, these bikes here, they've got the Bros T motor. Um, both have got 630 watt-hour batteries. Big ticks there. Price on the hardtail, 2,499 euros. And, and the full suspension... Uh, comes in at three, four, nine, nine euros. Great prices. If you think about it, right? The Bros T motor, 70 newton meters. Weight of the bike, 24 kilos. Those are those are all good numbers in terms of the power, in terms of the weight, in terms of the battery, in terms of the price. Yeah, and for sure, I think we are very, very focused nowadays of lighter weight and all the power. Really. I think it's getting that way. Well, what? some people might be. Some people in the mountain bike industry would like us to believe it's all about lightweight. Is this, is this the conspiracy? It's absolute nonsense. However, well, you know I don't disagree with you there, but the trends that we can see more commonly is everyone's trying to shave the weight down and find as much power with as least weight as possible. But what we're starting to see, though, is now this mid-range, you know, 70 newton meters. Is it full power? Is it low power? Well, well, you're going down a king-size rabbit hole here. <laughs> I mean, you know, is it power? Is it weight? Is it, is it torque? What, what is it? Anyway, let's leave that one for another day. It's the decathlon. Yeah. Great, get yourself down to the decathlon store. Don't just go and buy a crate of wine. Have a look at this e-bike at the same time. They've got so much there. You can get your climbing gear, you can get your archery, but more importantly, their new range of bikes is doing something that is unheard of. Here's one for you then, here's one for you. What do you think, what do you think was the sweet spot in terms of price for an EMTB? Chucking him Again, on the spot! T- talk about king size <laughs> rabbit holes. Well, you, I mean, look, you, you, worked, you worked in the YT Mill in Surrey. Yes. Give us an idea of what the kind of average price of, of e-mountain bike sales was. So Are I, you allowed to t- discuss that kind of detail? I can give a broad <laughs> overview. And this is in terms of, yeah, percentage of e-bikes sold versus regular mountain bikes sold. Honestly, and I can say from a UK perspective, confidently, it was over 60%. No, you're not answering the question. What's the question? The, what is the average price of e bikes sold at the YT Mill in Surrey? It's definitely leaning towards the Core 4, Core 4 Decoy MX. So we're talking between six and £7,000. That's a lot of money, isn't it? It is, but it's maybe, I'm, maybe I'm warped. Maybe I'm warped, but you're talking top spec in the range. Maybe you're warped. No, no, no. Whoa, whoa. We know the warped coming to work on EMVN. You know that warped coming from YT. <laughs> but, but yeah, okay. I, 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 to be fair, I think you know the price point from YT's range is anywhere from sort of five thousand pounds all the way up to seven thousand pounds. And to me, that is a good staple of where okay. a full suspension right. e-bike well, should go. Well, there you go, folks. We've literally. Chuck that down the other direction with the with the decathlon bikes. And for one thing's for sure, we're not saying that there's a performance disadvantage with these decathlon bikes, because I've ridden some of them and for lots of terrain they're they're bang on. Let's now tip the pendulum. Although you don't tip pendulums, you swing the pendulums. <laughs> the other tip direction. The scale, swing tip the, the pendulums. Yeah, scales and pendulums. Yeah. Porsche. 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 Porsche got a new uh, uh, e-bike cross performance bike. Uh, Shimano EP801 motor, 630 watt hour battery. Uh, you know, again, not too dissimilar to that Decathlon bike in terms of you know watt hours, but it's not got the EP801 motor on Decathlon. EP801, I'm going to say for the fourth week running, has got auto shift in it. Well, so this is one of those bikes that actually really qualifies having an EP801 because it comes with auto shift, right? Mm-hmm. That's the bike that really shows what it can do, along with, you know, they say the Canyon Spectral, but it's interesting. Interesting. Go on, why is it interesting? Because the price terrifies me. All right, me. but what do you think about the bike? 
Yeah, the bike in itself, I mean, aesthetically, looks very similar to Hardtail. Like, it, the shape, the design, it's... Do you like it? <laughs> yes or no? You're gonna put me in that binary one on one on zero. Well, go on, I'll make you can have a maybe if you want. Okay, okay. No, no, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna be brutally honest with you. This is not for beating around the bush. This is no. I I find. Well, how can you say that after last week? You were rattling on about how you loved the Rottweil bike. Yeah. This is a Rottweil bike. It is. But if it was a Rottweil bike, then it would look like a Rottweil bike. Oh, I like it. I like it. I like it. A bit of controversy. You know, no, a bit it's not. Of... It's it's a great point. I don't like it either. <laughs> I was going to say we can agree to disagree, like, but we can like, agree to agree. I do like the colour though. I think the green is cool. Yeah, uh, and, but colour's one part of it. And again, this is the fashion police. Your colour isn't making everything up. No, this, is is this is fashion and finance police. 13,900 euros. That, that's, that's terrifying. And again, maybe it's my conditioned mind. But it's running 120 mil front suspension and 100 mil rear suspension. So, so 100. A, so here's another one for you. I want to, you know, it's, we, the EMBN audience know, want to know where you sit in terms of travel, in terms of high low power, in terms of price, in terms of fashion. Yeah. So here's one for you. Grill What's me. the sweet spot? Do you believe in terms of suspension travel on an e-mountain bike? I mean, you can't go wrong with 160, 150 setup. Like, that is the great all-rounder. That is the do-it-all suspension travel. Mm -hmm. However, I think e-bikes do change that a little bit. Having a little bit more travel, what you lose through efficiency, I mean, you gain through capability. That's my, that's my thoughts okay. on it. Hmm. Now, throw that's that back in your way. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where is your ideal suspension travel on an EMTB? Uh, and full suspension. I'm yeah. totally with you. Uh, but you know what? Thing, things can change sometimes. Like, yes, uh, it's a bit, I think 150, 160. 150, 160, 160, 160. It's neither here nor there. Yesterday, I, I was re. Um, Revisiting. Revisiting or reacquainted with the giant Trance X Advanced Elite. 140, 150. Boy, that bike can move. What absolute flying shit. And you know, I think part of it. Sometimes it's not just the travel, it's the combination of how the suspension works, the suspension design, the, the balance of flex to stiffness in the frame, and also the wheels. That bike had the zip wheels in them. I'm a massive fan of those wheels. I think they take the sting out of rocks and roots, so I think that gives you, gives you a little bit more bit of compliance. See, this is, this is where, again, maybe a point to agree to disagree. As much as I, I understand everything that comes with the zip wheels, I don't disagree with you, but it's a very foreign feeling jumping on those wheels and feeling the, the, the flex in I them. I think it's absolutely beautiful in terms of the traction you get in the terrain and, and, and the, the cushioning it gives you from, from hard summer conditions. I think this is a, 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 another conversation. Should we finish off with that beautifully Funny looking uh, Porsche bike, uh, 74 degree seat to angle, 67 degree head to bike. It's a steep old bike, isn't it? Available yeah. medium and large. Uh, oh, it's got several color options. Um, guys, got... guys, what, what do you guys think of, of, the, of the Porsche bike and the decathlon? Which one would you choose if you had the option? I know. Let's move on from, let's move on from bicycles to where you can ride your mountain bikes. Uh, there is a new cycle route in North Wales called the Trans Eruri. A Rory? Rory. Is that how you pronounce it? You, you, you can, are of the heritage. Trous, sorry, Trous. Let me do it correctly. Trous a Rory. Um, although, obviously, some people in different parts of the country will pronounce it differently. This is uh, 4,595 metres of ascent and um, takes quite a few days to ride, but through some fantastic terrain. I mean, we've ridden a lot up there on the channel over the years, and uh, yeah, it's a belter. Uh, meanwhile, now, quite possibly one of the biggest pieces of e-bike news in the past week is that the first ever e-enduro World Cup took place in Finale Outdoor Region on the weekend. Uh, in the female category, Laura Charles took the win for the Miranda Factory Race Team from uh, Florencia uh, Espinera Herreras. Hope I got the pronunciation right there. But in the male category, uh, the former double world champion Fabian Burrell on his all new Canyon Strive On bike took the win, the first ever male uh, World Cup 
uh, e-bike race winner along with Laura. So congratulations to the both of them. What's quite interesting was that in third place, Florian Nikolai uh, took a very good uh, position on his Fulga bike with the Polini motor. And also we saw some other bikes there, which we've not seen before. We saw the reigning champion Yannick Pontal uh, on a transition on a bike which seemed to have either a Brose motor or quite possibly a SRAM motor. Folks, remember you can watch all the highlights uh, of the racing on GMBN Racing YouTube. And remember, if you want to watch all the World Cup racing live, go over to GCN Plus and you get all the action, uh, all the channels worldwide. See you there. So it is that wonderful time in the show where you guys send in your photos and make myself and Steve very, very jealous. We've got Jason's photo here. In the vineyard. Beautiful. <laughs> I mean, ignore the bike, vineyard. It looks amazing. Uh, location? It is in Weisbaden, Germany. There you go. I think my German's all right there. It's not bad. That's not too bad. This is interesting, this next new bike, the JLC. Yeah, I'm ignoring the background for this one. JLC, what's it about? Fire in the comments. I need to know more about this bike. Yeah, it looks cool. Awesome. And they are in Queensland, Australia. Whoa. The sun isn't shining quite as much as I thought it would be. Next up. I know where that is. Where is it? Go that's on. Uh, that, that, that's got to be an, a Rory shot. That's got to be Snowdonia. A Rory. Yeah, Snowdonia. So, Beautiful. Yeah. And a fleet of orange e-bikes. That's the first, I think. Yeah. Not I mean, bad. Well, it's three. Uh, not the first. It's the third now. <laughs> Yeah, beautiful. And, and finish things off, we've got, where's that? That looks looks North America to me. I haven't got my glasses on, so I can't see. But oh, no, 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 you're not far off. Yeah, North I mean, transition, America, love it. Pacific Ring of Fire somewhere, no, probably mm, Downeyville area. Put uh, my glasses on. Reno, Nevada. Oh! <laughs> that was pretty good, That's credit not to far. you. That is not far at all. Right, okay. Alex, dream, cool. loving the bike. There you go. Uh, fantastic uh, images there, guys, from you this week. Uh, Kim Khan. Yeah, looking forward to seeing more. Now, when Adam started a few weeks ago, we asked you guys what you'd like to know about him. Bring it on. Let's well, see what you got. 50 years young MTB says, Adam, what bike company did you work for while you were in New Zealand? Great question. Um, I worked for an amazing company called Chargebout, who were the moustache distributor of New Zealand. And yeah, I mean, hey Cam, hey Chris. It's an incredible setup they've got. And yeah, great bikes, great people, great coffee. There you go, fantastic. Uh, Dieter, Dieter Buchholz. Sorry, Dieter, Dieter, Dieter. Welcome, Adam. My question to you is, uh, will, you see, will we also see you performing crazy stuff on bikes, steep climbs, long jumps, and fast rides, and so on? So thanks for the welcome. That's very, very kind of you. Mm. Yes, yes, you will. Well, it depends if he lets me, so. That's, that's absolute nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> do, whatever, do whatever you want. Come on, If you want right. to do long jumps, you yes. crack on, because I ain't going to be doing them. Jumps, <laughs> without a shadow of a doubt. Crazy stuff, generally, I've got a bit of a crazy vibe, so, yeah. See more. Okay, and the final question uh, this week isn't isn't strictly about Adam, uh, but one of those asked uh, on our one weekly shows. What do you consider? This is sorry from Nets Nets for Cars guy. What do you consider the full assist versus mid assist threshold to be? That's a bloody good question. A 75 newton meter motor is closer to the 85 newton meter crowd than the 50 to 60. I don't want to hear it. That's crowd. influencing my decision making here. I mean, personally, I see, yeah, 75 Nm plus, that's your, your full power. And then anywhere from, say, 50 up to 75, I'd say is your mid assist, realistically. But the lines are blurred. It's like the difference between a super enduro and a duro and a downhill and a trail bike. It's all becoming a little bit mixed in. So in the true spirit of our EMBN weekly show and the fact that you guys have given me such a warm welcome, we would love for you to throw some more comments down in the comment section below. So fire them over, maybe make some difficult ones for this guy over here, but I will try and answer them as best as possible. And here we are in the bike vault. Uh, first up is John, custom built, Switzerland in the Rheinfold. What is this bike fast, fast works. works? I love it. I think it's great. $2,000, it's a mix of cheap and strong parts, micro shift, advent nine speed, Bafang, BBS, HD, custom film. It's, oh, it's a bolt on, bolt on yeah. kit. Super nice from, my, from me. I love the color. Well, uh, do you know what guys, we haven't, we haven't seen many, we haven't seen many bolt on kits recently on the NBN show. That's no, super don't nice. get me wrong, I'm not against all of them. 
This is beautiful. This is a beautiful shot. Uh, gonna give you guys a quick sneak glimpse of my tabs. Uh, anyhow, uh, this is Polygon uh, Mount Broman N8 in Mount Dora, Florida. Lovely light, lovely light on this shot. Uh, for me, it's got to be a super nice Adam, if you don't mind me saying so. Super nice, I'd agree. Uh, oh, look at the puppy. Look at the puppy. We love a pup. Bastion the puppy. We were talking earlier about trail dogs, weren't we? Pixie, yeah, it was great. I mean, we all love a trail dog, right? I mean, I'm almost ignoring the, the bike here. Are you talking to Pixie, talking to me, talking to the audience? For everyone. Going on? <laughs> All right, cool. Nice, it's super nice. Yeah, can, definitely a super nice. Editor can include that or not. Uh, next up is another puppy! Another pup. You guys really know how to tug on the heartstrings. Mm, Brando, my trail dog. Almost covering up the, the Fantic logo. That's a nice bike. Lovely dog. Yeah. <laughs> super nice. And that's it from the bike vault. Adam, any favorites in the bike vault? Have you got a dog? I don't have a dog. Got I mean, a cat? No, I've Hamster. got a, a child. <laughs> okay, right. And probably, glad you class the child with dogs and cats. Probably a little bit more work than a dog or a cat, so you know. Let's get into the social stuff, Adam. Chris Grice, coming in hot. Uh, yeah, specialized latest bikes. Whoosh. That is rapid. Oh, Pretty red hot, isn't it? Gaps that. Uh, meanwhile, Rob Williams. Uh, Rob Williams is a high bike rider. Yeah. Uh, as well as Chris. Chris is on high bikes as well. I think I got pulled up last time about that. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, uh, we want to know where Danny ended up on his two battery mission. Let's have a little gander, shall we? Who is Danny? Who is Danny? Danny Hart, isn't it? It's got no Danny <laughs> Mad Skills. Danny McCaskill. Oh, we know how many Dannys are there. Yeah, I know. They're all good on two wheels, aren't they? Oh, he's not bad. He's, he's not bad. He just, he's not bad, is he? He infuriates me because he's so good. Infuriates you? Infuriates me. He infuriates you. How can someone be that good on two wheels? I wouldn't go telling Daddy McCaskill that he infuriates you. That's maybe we'll end, end up, well. End up like that. So rounding off today's show. In the best way possible, I'm going to throw this question to Steve. What is coming next? Coming next uh, on the channel. Well, it's no secret that Canyon have got an all-new Neuron on coming, and myself and Louis went on a uh, semi-disastrous trip into the hills around Riva Delgada on the new bike. Obviously, I can't go into the details right now because it's literally coming out in a few days' time. But what, what an amazing bike, and we'll show you guys the true capabilities of the new Neuron uh, around the hills of Garda uh, on Friday. And then on Sunday, we'll be talking about wheels today. Um, do you need strong wheels for your e-mountain e bike? It's one of the best upgrades in my eyes. There you go. So to get a bit of an insight into that and some of the products, tune into the video coming out on Sunday. So guys, thanks for joining us. Adam, great to... Uh, have me still on board. Have you still on board? Might not still, be here next week. Still, still putting up with with me. And uh, no, it's fantastic. It's great. Yeah, it's loving great. It. Uh, I can't wait for it to, us to go for a spin in the hills uh, very soon. Yeah, I got a fantastic bike I got from Amazon. Oh, <laughs> talk about price point. But no, thank you again for everyone and your warm and welcome comments. So keep them coming, and yeah, we'll see you on next week's show.